which leads me to a point that I want to share here, which is when you're working with your clients, we we can break down the most expensive way to do velocity banking and then the most inexpensive way to do velocity banking and then allow the client to make their decision if there's someone that does not have a debt tool yet and they're trying to decide which way to go, okay? So I've had multiple clients they're like, they have a thing with tapping into their equity, right? They just don't want to do it. They don't feel comfortable. So they just stick with PLOCs, okay? And I'm going to treat this like a like a restaurant, how we would um, evaluate what's the cost of that restaurant. So I'm just going to put one money sign. So in regards to personal, unsecured, revolving lines of credits, personal or business, and then secured, personal or business, line of credit, no cost, no closing costs, no origination fees. That is the cheapest way to do velocity banking. Only disadvantage is the rate is typically always higher than a HELOC. The other disadvantage is lower limit, but you may not mind that, okay? So the there's lower credit limits. Typically, it's like 20, 25K, maybe 50K. Very rare do you see 60, 70, and 100K line of credit. I, I just don't typically see that that often, especially on the personal side. So those are your factors to consider, right? The next one up from there is a HELOC. In the second position, we'll put two money signs. Some HELOCs in the second position do have closing costs. I would recommend when I'm working with my clients, I typically look for, especially in the second position HELOC, I look for the zero closing cost options. And then obviously you're also looking at interest rate and then how we can use, what is the function, the feature, how, how does that HELOC actually operate, right? And then your first lien HELOC is your most expensive option, right? We'll put three money signs. Depending on what state you're in, closing costs can be upwards of 10, 12, 13 plus thousand dollars, right? Because of the state. That's California, that's New York, okay? Where I've seen that personally working with clients. Now, the one above that is the all-in-one loan and then first lien HELOC, but with first savings bank, okay? Now, you've heard me create quite a bit of content between these two because they've become popular over the years, increasing more attention. So first savings bank, first banking, what am I writing? Oh my goodness, let me clean that up. So first savings bank, right, is the name of the bank. I think they're in Indiana. Um, and they just do a, a very customized first lien HELOC. We'll put these two, right, four stars. It's going to cost you a lot of money compared to these options. So how do you measure that with the client? How do you make sense of whether an all-in-one loan would make sense over a PLOC, right? Typically, this is based on my experience working with over a thousand people, I would say at this point. It's safe to say I've spoken to at least over a thousand plus people, right? It is very, very rare that I talk to anybody that gets a first lien HELOC with First Savings Bank or all-in-one loan making under income wise under 7000 right so this is typically going to be ideal all in one loan first lien heloc with first savings bank it's typically going to be ideal for the person that is above average american income i'm um, where i'm saying i'm seeing 70 80 90 and six figures and up is typically where the cost outweighs right the or am i not saying that right the cost is incomparable to the value that they're getting from the tool, right? When I'm dealing with people that are average American income, five, 6,000 net take home, four net take home, 3K a month net take home, this is going to be less and less advantageous because the interest rates on an all-in-one loan, especially in this environment right now, all-in-one First lien HELOC with First Savings Bank, they're the highest interest rates, right? I can still go out in the marketplace and we can still find HELOCs at 5% below what the prime is at currently because some banks do intro rate offers or some fixed rate options where you can get rates under six. With the first lien HELOC, you're at like eight point something percent right now. With all in one loan, it's like seven point something percent, right? That is high, 
especially when it's the whole entire debt on a on a property on that person's residence, you know, 400k, 500k, 300k, right? Pretty expensive. So, it makes sense when the client is bringing in 15 grand a month. Man, can we manipulate that rate down and now they have access to a $750,000 line of credit, you know, or half a million dollar line of credit that's open for the next 10 plus years that they're going to use to make investments and do all kinds of things. Different story, different scenario. It's not a one and done, but I'm just showing you this is like black and white, kind of the layout. Here are the facts. And then there's the gray areas, how you would guide your clients, right? Typically, anybody under 7,000 a month, they're they're roaming around here. For the majority of clients I've worked with, they've got PLOCs and HELOCs in the second position. Maybe, maybe, maybe some first lien HELOC people. And if it's a first lien HELOC, their mortgage balance is typically around here. That's what they have left, maybe 250, maybe three. When you start going 354, five, six and up, their income typically is much higher, right? It just makes sense. You, you'll notice as you work with more and more clients, you start to see a rhythm, right? Single mom making 2,500 a month net take home probably don't even qualify for a first lien HELOC, right? So she's probably going to get a $7,000 personal line of credit. It's a much smaller case study, right? Easier numbers, no cost. You would want to push them in that direction, right? I, I, I really don't like seeing when I come across a client making under 4K a month, 5K, and they got sold into a first lien, right? HELOC, and now they're kind of stuck with it. And it really slows the process when we could have had a better tool. So when you're working with clients, trying to get them started, um, especially when they don't have a debt tool, uh, really instill patience. Let them know, hey, we want to do this right the first time. Worked with so many clients, maybe even some on this call, right? Who knows? Where, where we first got together, I mean, you wanted to run, right? And I kind of had to like pump the brakes on you a little bit. I was like, wait a minute, there's a better opportunity over here at this bank. Maybe if you switch your banking over here instead, right? So have that same grace when you're working with the client. So that's that's a layout, right? In terms of lowest, most inexpensive way to do velocity banking. And this guy, Harj Gill, would agree. He, he stays right here. He don't even touch first lien HELOCs because he is, is very pro becoming debt-free, like paying everything off debt-free, right? So that's where my philosophy kind of varies off a little bit, where I'm like, well, sure, I like to embrace debt-free, but I also look at you know, the Grant Cardones of the world and people who are leveraging debt and the more capital that you have access to, that's when these tools start to make a little bit more spent, more sense, especially if your income is higher and you can manipulate a 7% rate down to two and it's like nothing, right? So that's when that makes a whole lot of sense. So I figured those are some really cool pieces of data that I wanted to share with you. 